All right, guys. Today I'm answering about 30 of your guys' questions from the Discord channel and the YouTube channel. Okay, so I got my computer with all of your questions, and so I will be looking down and looking up. There's a lot of good questions in here, a lot of nice juicy stuff. I'm going to try to get into it and help you guys out. If you want to ask me questions, a little bit of help mentoring from me, please join the Discord. It's a little chat app. Join the Discord. Look in the link below, but let's get this party started so I can bring you guys some value. What's up, guys? My name's Andrew. I'm a serial entrepreneur software engineer and a junk removal business titan. I started a junk removal business as a stepping stone to return to my passion of technology and apps. I invite you guys to stick around, follow my journey from becoming a junk removal business titan to building a billion dollar home services app. All right guys, I honestly built this channel with the intentions of getting a bunch of subscribers and then building an app and then a year pitching it to you guys. But I have been getting asked on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, about mentoring. I will do 15 minute free sessions as long as I can. If you have any questions on mentoring, check the video description. There's a Calendly link. You can book a 15 minute free session with me. Just make sure you come prepared with your questions because it's gonna be a strict 15 minutes and I will help you as much as I can. I also put an hour in there because that is gonna take my time. You know, an hour is gonna be a hundred bucks. So for the people who really truly want like a lot of help and really need an hour of mentoring, just get a bunch of questions ready so you can get as much value out of the hundred bucks as you can. Let's get into the questions. So from Goodbye Junk, he asks, hello Andrew, when it comes to getting paid from all customers, who are you saved to invoice or does everyone pay at the time of service? How do you charge a customer if they want? Oh, so let's start with the first one. First question is, I charge everybody on site immediately with the credit card machine and everybody pays on site. I let them know that I have a credit card machine. A lot of customers, they should know I mean, it's pretty obvious you pay after, but you will get the corporate contracts, commercial contracts, realtors who ask to pay you later and you send them an invoice. In the beginning, I did not do that. And that's partly because I just didn't get any commercial contracts in the beginning. 99% of people will pay on the spot. You bust out the credit card machine, you take payment right there, right now. How do you charge a customer if they demo a play set or hot tub? Check my pricing sheet video, come up with your full load, your eighth, your quarter, your sixth, blah, 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 blah. I charge based on volume and then extra labor. So a play set, if it's gonna use up a quarter, let's just say a quarter is um, 345 in my truck. I would leave it at 345 unless I was gonna be there for a couple extra hours disassembling and you know taking apart, I would tack on, which mine is $50 an hour per person, so 100 bucks an hour. So if I thought it was gonna take me an extra hour, I'd tack on 100. Two extra hours, 200. Now hot tub, charge based on how much space you use up. So usually hot tubs will always take up minimum a quarter, so I start at 345, and then if I have to sawzall it and I'm gonna be there for a while, tack on another 100. If it's a big hot tub and it uses up half, we're looking at like my half load price, which is 495, and I'll tack on 100 for sawzalling because it's gonna take an hour with two guys saws on it so 595 if i need to save the job i'll just say hey you know what i'll drop the hundred dollars of extra labor and i won't charge you taxes so they feel like they're getting a deal for the 495 but i always tack on the extra fees and if they look hesitant and they don't want to do it i'll drop them like i'm doing them a favor and you are doing them a favor because that extra hour of time is costing you money especially me because i'm paying my two guys on the truck for an extra hour and they're just sitting there doing extra work that's costing me money when they could be at another job so thank you goodbye junk for the question we got Skip Swagger. He asks, on a lot of platforms that you would market on, such as Facebook, will ask really specific data point questions about the person you'd market to, questions like age, income level, gender. How do you keep track of that to answer the age old question, who's my specific customer? I ran Facebook ads one time and it went okay. I don't think <laughs> I spent 900 bucks, got maybe one job, but I would tell you this, I think it's 35 and older. If you wanna be very, very safe, do 40, 45 and older. Obviously any age group, this is a luxury service, so I would do at least 50,000. I get junk removal customers who don't look like they have $50,000 incomes and they pay, but definitely just older demographics, definitely both genders. Van Gogh Junk Removal asks, what do you do if you only have four hours of work? The guys, even if it's on a Sunday, do you only pay them for those hours or a full day? If you're not on the truck anymore, oh, start, so that's question number one. In peak season, I was letting them clock eight hours, right? If I had only four hours, but, but that's because I'm running my ads so intense, and spending so much, I know phone calls are gonna come through. If they have four hours, I'd have them go uh, do maintenance on the trucks, fix the tail lights, uh, uh, clean all the trucks, wait for a phone call to come in, go hand out flyers, go to grocery stores and park the truck. During the slow season, winter, it does slow down a tad bit. It did slow down just a little bit for me in November, December this month. 
The rain's been horrible. I've been sending them home, but they've been happy to go home after five, six hours of work. Um, but peak season, I'll probably go back to the same. Uh, let them clock the full eight, 10 hours, however long. If you're not on the truck anymore, do you notice a problem staying on top of your guys? And this is still from Van Gogh. Having guys, having things ran the way you want or does it slip from you? Absolutely, when you're off the truck, things slip away. But I have been very good at getting back on top of them. And honestly, the new Filipinos I hired are not acting just as customer service call agents, but they are acting as like, I have them pestering the employee. We have a Telegram group chat for each truck. There's two crews, week crew, weekend crew. I got the, the two call agents in there and the two employees and myself. So five people in each chat. I have my employees hounding them on each job. Don't forget before and after photos. Don't forget to mark on my way. Don't forget to mark done. And then I'm using whip around for, in for inspections, start a day inspection, end a day inspection. So I have all these protocols in. Um, the Filipinos uh, that I hired for customer service are enforcing it and it has been incredible. And I'm hiring an ops manager that he goes around and stays on top of each crew, pops up out of nowhere and just helps the crew out or, you know, does the maintenance on the vehicle. So we're getting a lot better at that. But yes, it did get away from me, but not anymore. Van Gogh asked another question. If the guys get a red light ticket, do you pay for the ticket or make the worker pay for the ticket? Good question. That has not come up. If it's a good employee, I'll pay for it for sure. Once that once that actually happens, but surprisingly, we're in Los Angeles. That has not happened. We have not gotten a parking ticket yet. I tend to like all my employees that try to hire only good employees, so I would cover it. And I would definitely just be like, Please don't make this happen again, dude. Like, you know, we're a small business. We're still a startup just because we have these good days. I have high expenses, so let's just be more careful. Good questions so far, guys. And the reason why I'm going through this fast is because we have a lot of freaking questions. ND asks, who do you use to make your website pages? I use Wix. Wix is the best. You've got Squarespace, you have Wix, you have Webflow. Webflow's too advanced. Squarespace is too basic. Wix is perfect. It's better than GoDaddy. J33, what's up, my man? I see you in the Discord. How do I calculate labor add-on cost for light demo? Hot tubs is a percentage. Specific cost man per hour is it a set cost. How do I get that number? So I always start with how much space is it gonna take? And when it comes to demo, I tack on 100 bucks an hour and I don't prorate. Make sure they're aware that, hey, this might take two hours. It's gonna be 200 bucks. And I always tack on the extra labor and I try my best to guesstimate. And I think I need to increase my $50 per hour per person because I pay my employees 20 bucks an hour, right? 60 bucks an hour I'm making while my guys are working, right? I think I need to make a little bit more because if they were just to be there all day for eight hours and it was one load and I was paying 60 bucks an hour, 60 bucks an hour, 400, I got it, yeah, 480 bucks I would make if they were stuck there all day with a full load. And it's happened. I'm sure you've been in those situations, full load just took way too long. I would only make 480, which is a dangerously low number for me because of my, my expenses. So I might have to increase my hourly rate, but right now, the answer to your question is, is it's not a percentage, it's a $50 per person per hour for extra labor. And if it's a heavier load, which is, if you're demoing, it's most likely gonna be a little bit heavier of a load too, generally speaking. So I would probably tack on another 50 for heavy weight and I charge 50 per quarter for heavy weight. So in this example, if it was a quarter, 345, heavy weight 50, 395, took an extra hour, I'd tack on another 100, 495. So that's what I would charge and that's how it would work. And also, it just really depends. If there's long distance where I couldn't park close, I'm tacking on another 50 to 100. And you need to have this on your pricing sheet to explain it. This is not jipping people. This is not screwing or scamming people. These are legit expenses because it is so much harder when it requires extra labor, power tools, sawzalls, long distance, hallways that are obnoxious with elevators, and you have to park a mile away. Like, it happens a lot in LA. So, and you need to be compensated because your guys are working double hard they're exhausted, it takes more time. So just be confident when you pitch these prices. And like I said, you can drop a couple of them to save the job. Good question, J33. B Simp asks, I have some questions for the video. What's your process for training employees? Do you have any checklists? What do you do? Is there any time between jobs or canceled? I think I just explained that previously. Do you background check and drug test? And what's your process for hiring from the Philippines? Okay. so process for training employees is, I have a video coming on this, but 
I start with a 15 minute interview through Calendly using Google Meet or Zoom. I've been using Google Meet lately. That 15 minutes, I'll knock out 10 of those 15 minute interviews, pick one or two good ones. The best personality, the one that seems the most friendly and ready to crush it. I'll take them on the truck. It used to be on the with me, but now I'll send them on uh, the truck with one of my best guys and he'll tell me how he did. So that's pretty much the training process. After that one day of training, kind of shadowing my guy, we have a gist of how good he's gonna be. Then he goes on the truck for a week. You know, we hire him and give them a week trial. And then from that point, we know. Pretty simple. Checklist, yes, we have start a day checklist, end a day checklist with whip around. I used to have a really cool piece of paper that had everything, paper checklist. If you guys want that paper checklist, just DM me. Uh, background checks and drug testing. I did not do that in the beginning, but now I do with clear checks. And hiring from the Philippines, that is a long process to get it right. I have a very, very good system for hiring the best of the best from onlinejobs.ph, that will be its own video. RB Coho asks, how do you suggest I set my pricing initially as a new business? Do you determine cost per load in relation to dump fees or some other metric? Yes, you definitely need to look at your dump fees, but a rule of thumb or a general rule to probably be pretty safe is check 1-800-GOT-JUNK, charge their price. I didn't charge their price when I had my ugly graffiti box truck, but as soon as I upgraded to my brand new F-150 dump trailer, I price match them and that's that. I had decals, I had shirts, I had a credit card machine, I had a pricing sheet, I look professional. If you look professional, charge 1-800-GOT-JUNK's price. Even though I match 1-800-GOT-JUNK's price, I'm still better pricing because every time customers come to me for some reason, like they're trying to charge me $500 for these two sofas when I charge 250. So for some reason, I'm still cheaper filling up the truck, but my full load is the same price. If you're brand new and you're not professional, go 200 bucks lower and tell them I'm cheaper than 1-800-GOT-JUNK. That'll still be a good price because if they're charging 800, you're going to be 600. 1-800-GOT-JUNK is a, a 10 by eight by five, right? Do the math on the, the cubic yards on that. Compare yours to it. If it's comparable, charge pretty close to theirs. But also you might be going to more expensive dumps than they are. You might not know the, the cheap dumps yet. So find out your dump price. If your dump price is 50 to a hundred bucks, you can you can be pretty safe on how much you charge, right? You can charge 500 and still make money. You can charge a thousand. So just check 1-800-GOT-JUNK's price, find out your dump fees, and you'll figure it out. You know, that's the best I can give you without knowing your numbers. Because of course you have a lot of other numbers. You know, I don't know if you're going to have commercial insurance. I don't know what your truck payment is going to be, but that's a safe way to go. Triple H asks, what insurance companies and licenses do you need? In LA, you don't need a tax license to do junk removal. I'm pretty sure. I've looked everywhere. I do have a tax license up in Thousand Oaks, so I have a, a, a tax license. It was required, I believe, in Thousand Oaks, so I registered a tax license. It's very weird. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Tax licenses were kind of confusing the, to figure out if you need a permit, but I definitely didn't need a permit, but definitely Google if you need a tax license. This is something as a state-by-state, state, but insurance is definitely a must. It's really cheap. You can get Next Insurance. Everybody uses Next. It's like 20 to 40 bucks a month for general liability. Once you start actually getting employees, you are going to have to do payroll and workers compensation insurance. You're obviously going to need auto insurance and technically you have to, when you're running a business, it should be commercial auto, even if you're using an F-150, but nobody does that, but you should, you know, it really just depends on uh, if you wreck your car, how much of an asshole is the insurance adjuster when they come and take a look at it. And if they figure you're on a job, they might not pay for it, but nobody does that with their first truck. They just get normal insurance. Once you get a dump truck, you're forced to get commercial insurance. So you can kind of scoop by for a while with normal insurance on your truck until you get a dump truck. Now, these are YouTube questions. Those were all Discord questions. Now, let's go to YouTube. We got Beast Evolution. He asked, hey, Andrew, what does your monthly expenses look like? If I do 140,000 in a month from two trucks, which has happened, I usually do about 50 to 60, 60 per truck, 120 gross. Had a month where I hit 140 gross. That 140, I'm spending about 40,000 on ads, okay? So I'm left with 100. Payroll on that is gonna be about 35,000. Okay, so I'm now down to 65. Dump fees and gas is gonna be about 20,000. That leaves me about with 45,000 profit before paying me and all my other fixed expenses. I've got about 7,000 in fixed expenses. So minus 7,000. Credit card fees at the end of the month are gonna hit me with another 3,000. So I'm looking at 35,000 if I make 
140. Then I gotta pay me, and I gotta pay me pretty good because I live in LA, so I pay me 15,000. That leaves me with a company profit of potentially 20,000, and there's definitely random things that I'm forgetting that will just come up. I mean, I've had a fuckload of maintenance issues lately. I've had like easily 20 grand of maintenance issues on these dump trucks in the last six months. I've had upgrading them, probably 15 grand, adding the custom racks, the ladders, the fucking underbody toolboxes. But my margins stay around 20 on a bad Bad month, 20%, on a good month, 30%. Jamal Santos says, how's the tax for that kind of business? I mean, just like any other business, you're gonna pay taxes, but I would recommend changing your LLC from an S Corp if you plan on growing and making more than 50 grand profit. If you think you're gonna make more than 50 grand profit, start looking into the S Corp thing. That's just a basic little baseline rule. I'm not a tax accountant, lawyer, advisor, but that is a safe general rule because you'll save on self-employment tax, just talk to a tax accountant, but start with that. Do I know any good website designers? DJ Irresistible. When I needed somebody to update my website that I built, I went to Upwork, posted an ad for a thousand bucks because I wanted them just to spoof it up a little. They took my current design and just made it a little bit better and then added a hundred pages for SEO. I wanted them to just copy a whole bunch of text from different websites and change it up a little bit and make hundreds of pages, a page for every little city, a page for every little thing we take. If you look at my website and all of like JRA's websites, you'll notice that they have like a hundred different pages. It's for SEO so that you start showing up for like mattress, appliance, clean out, hoarder, uh, hot tub, shed, and then every fucking city in your area. Go through all of their portfolios every submission that applies for your job on Upwork and look who has the best portfolio and just hire them to pimp up your website or start from scratch. I'm gonna make a video on building websites with Wix myself too. I'm gonna make one where I go through it and I'm also gonna make a video on how I do the hiring process and picking somebody who knows what they're doing and not being uh, robbed. Jacob Castillo, it's either Castillo, it's a double L or Castillo and we'll go with Castillo. Why do you use Clover? There is a, a lot of reasons I lose Clover, use Clover, but I, it will more than double your tips for your employees, period. The end. While Blue Koi Holling asks, why no Jobber? <laughs> I logged into Jobber, tried the trial, I logged right out. <laughs> it was just, it, it wasn't it. The UI, the UX just threw me off and never even gave it a chance. I, I, I don't want to give it a chance. It was just so ugly. I know that's uh, very shallow, but hey, what can I say? Michael Sand asks, I would like to see a video of how do you get your contracts for your employees when you hire them? And also, I would like to know what kind of licenses you need and what are the insurance that you need, like workers' comp, truck insurance, general liability. I really, really like your videos. Thank you so much, Michael. So my employee contracts, I just kind of wrote up. They're very generic. Definitely not like by legal standard or California law, probably. There's probably some things in there that aren't even correct. And I will eventually get those corrected because you do need actual real employee contracts contracts that follow state law. I'm more than willing to share how I wrote mine up though. It has very basic things in there. Like if you don't return the shirts that I give you, you're gonna be charged 50 bucks for each shirt. And also I'd like to know the kind of licenses. I think I just kind of went over that kind of insurance that you need, you need workers. Yep, I went over all this. So I hope that question helped. James Moore asks, what percentage does it cost to dispose of your junk? My labor is about 20% of my gross sales. Dumping gas can be about 10 to 15% of my expenses. Pretty high, but dumping gas is expensive out here in LA. Lo-Fi Tempo has a few questions. Do you contract with Yelp? I tried Yelp a couple times. I'm still undetermined if they are working. I spent 500 to 1,000 bucks just recently, and then a while ago I spent 2,000, 3,000 bucks. I wasn't tracking properly. Yelp has its own tracking number, but when the phone calls were coming in, I didn't write down if, if it was a Yelp lead or not because I, the phones were just blowing up too much. So it got pooled in with all my Google Ads calls. Now that I have these uh, Filipinos who are crushing it, I am going to make sure that they log if it's a Yelp lead. But the problem is the tracking number that I have goes to my Ring Central number. So I'm not able to pass through a whisper message because it goes through two numbers so that when that phone call comes through, it doesn't go call from Yelp. So I gotta have them ask like, hey, where'd you hear about us yet? I don't know if it was worth it. I feel like it wasn't, but I don't know if I was capitalizing. Do you have a contract or have your customers sign anything? No but I send invoices when they request them, which is very rare. Only big, big jobs request an invoice. Realtors will sometimes ask for an invoice, but no, 99% of people know you. You be very clear up front of how much it's gonna cost. You show them everything. We let them have all the information up front, 
before they make a decision. We say that on the phone, we don't charge to come out. So they have the opportunity to say no. And I have my employees trained very well on letting them know the price. I've never had a chargeback. I've never had a dispute. I've had one or two angry customers that got up in my, like that were really rude and I just refunded them their money. Two times that's ever happened in the last 14 months. Josh Silva asks, super professional video and i know you're referring to the guy that i hired uh for behind the scenes with my employees did you hire someone what camera did you use he has a canon c200 i forget but it's the the video camera the nice c200 or something canon one i will correct this later or you can just comment in the video and i'll get the correct one for you later but yes he has a guy i found on craigslist you can find quality people if you know how to review people's portfolio i posted need a photographer and a video editor and i got 30 to 50 responses right I went through all of their portfolios and I was like, and I found one guy and I was like, this is a find. Like this is an up and coming kid. He was, uh, I think 21, 20, and he was just really good for his price. His day rate is 500 a day and that's 12 hours. So it can be eight hours of shooting and four hours of editing. And he is fast, he is efficient, incredible guy. He actually did one of my commercials. B Jones 530 asks, where did you get your shirts and hats made? Rushordertees.com. What you can do in the beginning if you have decent credit is you can finance all of your stuff through a firm. If you wanna save your money for Google ads, we actually in the beginning financed everything through a firm. My girl, uh, my girl's credit was good enough to get approved all of our stuff through a firm. Ashley Bullock, hey, how do you deal with people who ask for estimates and pricing via text message? We seem to get a lot of business inquiries via text. Any advice? I do my best to give the spiel of how we price, how it's gonna work. Uh, we'd like to come out. It's the best way to do it. You know, we don't charge to come out. As long as you explain, like, our pricing starts at 150, it goes to 795, you pay for the space you use, yada, yada, yada. But the best way is for us to come out. Some people, I would say 20% of people, maybe a little bit lower, ask like, oh, can you just give me an idea of the price? We'll ask for pictures. I never give a price over the phone without seeing photos. They will send me the photos. I will then give them a range. Brittany and Edward, our awesome call center, people will call them back and tell them okay looking at these photos I have to remind you this is an estimate but you're in the range of four to five hundred it could be less it could be more we need to see it in person so that's how we handle text I don't text back and forth I have them send the photos and I call you want to build rapport the more they talk to you the more they're invested into you and that's how I handle text messages I try to avoid it unless they absolutely need an estimate golf town pro what size are those trailers funny story when I bought this trailer it said 12 by 8 by 4 so this whole time I thought I was getting a 12 by eight by four. I then later found out, and I was pretty upset, that he meant eight from the vendors, I mean. So it's 12 by six and a half by four. But for the longest time, I thought I had an eight footer. But our dump trucks are much bigger. I have a 14 foot by seven, a little over seven feet by almost four and a half. Osama Ben Kenny asks, why can't one change tires on dump trucks? I call 20 tire shops. Nobody can change tires on dump trucks. I finally found a tire shop. Luckily, only uh, 15 minutes away. They have bigger lug nuts. You need a bigger tool. Most people just don't have the tools. I don't know why, but they don't. So make sure you call around when you buy your dump truck to be prepared to know where to get your tires fixed when you get a flat. Paul ask, what interview questions do you ask? I enjoyed using Rean Central with my insurance office. I do my interviews via Google Meet using Calendly, but I ask them about 15 questions, just getting an idea of their work ethic, their availability, their competency, how well they work on the team. If you want those questions, please just comment down below and I will send you the list of my 15 questions I ask. Um, Ring Central is great. That's how I use my call center. That's what gives you the ability to start building out and having agents. So if you do expand to other locations, it, it becomes easier to build on top of that. And I'm gonna be making a video on how to build out your own call center. Mr. Moto Pete says, is 5K a day gross or net? I wish it was net. That is gross and I average 30% margins. 20 on a bad day, 30 on a good day. I'm at one to 2K a day net as a two man show. Oh wow, that's incredible. We're at the same level and you're on a two man show. I don't know how the fuck you're doing that. Props to you. I've got eight guys, two people from the Philippines, myself. I'm an 11 man show. Kudos to you, Mr. Moto Pete. I'm gonna need to take some advice from you. So when you see this video, let me, uh, let's set up a call. I'd love to hear some stuff from you. Comment below. Swift Disposal from Bakersfield. 
As a software engineer, what is better for now, house call or work ease? Both are good. Uh, if you're gonna be a one-man show for a while, house call just seems a little bit easier out of the box, a little easier on the eyes. It just seemed a lot easier. Work ease, if you plan on growing and expanding, is definitely gonna be a little more efficient. Work ease has a lot more flexibility, customization, a little more powerful. And I use work ease now. I switched because I have two locations. And somebody asked this question, I don't know who, but they asked, so do they run a background check to run local service ads? And what does that mean for a person with a felony? They do run a background check. So if you have a felony, I'm assuming you won't get approved. A way around that is you can add somebody to the business. So you can, in California, if you have an LLC, it's called a statement of information. You can file a new statement of information. You can do it yourself and you can add or change the business owner. You can get on Google local services. There's ways around it. So guys, I hope that helped. I wanted to throw out a little Q&A video. If you enjoyed that and you have questions, I will do another, I'm gonna try to do a Q&A video once a month. So I'm gonna timestamp all of the questions down below. Please comment, like, subscribe. Please also join the Discord because I am in that, it's, a, it's an app that we can all chat. It's a live chat, much better than a Facebook group. I am in there all the time. You can ask me questions. Guys, it's been a pleasure. I really hope this brings value. I hope I answer some questions. I'm sorry I went so fast. It's just, there was a lot of freaking questions. So, as always, toodles.